What's going on, everybody? This is Dave from This Is Pop Punk Promotions. I'm here with John from Napoleon from Toronto, Canada. How's it going, John? I'm doing very well. Thank you. How are you, my friend? Really appreciate you coming on, dude. Let's uh, dive right into it. Appreciate you having me. So when and how did you guys form? So um, Napoleon started when uh, we started when I was in high school, my last year. Basically, the way it worked was... Uh, I went to a private high school with, as did the other guys at the beginning of the band. And um, when I was in like 11th grade, me and I met, there's a, there's a, our former bassist, Ori, moved uh, from Florida to Toronto and he came to the, uh, to that high school and him and I started talking about music and stuff. And uh, yeah, he, we basically had the idea to start a band together and uh, it was something I'd want to do for a while. I didn't really know anyone. And anyway, him and I started playing music and stuff together. And um, when we were in grade 12, basically like our school closed and we all had to go to a different school. And then we met, we became our first guitarist ever, Jack, who, uh, and the three of us, we formed the band together. And uh, I knew Aton from, uh, from another band him and I were in together once. And yeah, and Aton's still in the band today. He's the drummer. And yeah, we played our first show at the very beginning of 2018 and just been going since. That's awesome. So you guys released Enemy Within in June. How's the response been? Oh yeah, it's been awesome. That's uh yeah, people really like it. And we really like it too. It's been uh it's been incredible. Every uh every show we've played since it came out has been uh has been much bigger than what we've been used to. It's uh you know obviously like we're still a relatively new band a lot of a lot of times we're playing to people who've like never heard us before or anything. But um, I'll give you a really good example. Just a couple of weeks ago, we played in a town called Thorold, Ontario, which I'm sure you've never heard of. It's in the middle of literally nowhere. It's pretty close to Niagara Falls. But uh, it, it's like, it was like, it was like one of those shows that we kind of just took, we're like, yeah, why not? And uh, like, I was like, you know, we'll go, we'll have fun. We'll play our 30 minute set, do our thing. And we'll, uh, you know, it's a good opportunity, I guess, to have a good time. And um, I, I was convinced, like, no one was going to come see us or anything. But we went and we played. We were, like, the second band of, like, four bands playing in this, like, sketchy city in the middle of nowhere. And there's still, like, a bunch of kids there, like, who knew, like, the words to the songs. And I'm like, oh, shit, like, this is, this is crazy. Um uh, kids were like buying like the record at the merch table asking us to sign it and stuff and it's like damn like this is just like it's really happening this is cool um we also recently uh played uh like our first show, our first like real show after covid was um or like when shows were allowed again it was uh at a like a legendary venue in toronto called the velvet underground which is a pretty big place and uh we it wasn't quite full capacity yet but it was like I forget the exact number, but it's still like very high. And I was thinking to myself, like, you know, it would be cool if we sell like half of it and the show is like completely sold out. And like I remember like day of, like our friends were messaging us, like, can you find us tickets? Can you find us tickets? And like people were like, can anyone selling tickets? It was really cool. Oh, that's incredible, man. So who did you guys record it with and how was the process? Uh so we recorded mo all of our recordings since like late 2019 have been, uh, we fortunately have a very good relationship with uh, Scott Middleton, formerly of Cancer Bat. So he manages us and produces us. And uh, he's kind of like our go-to guy for everything. He kind of like to make sure we're on the right path. He's like, he's very much been like our guy. And uh, we're very great. We're very lucky to have him. And uh, yeah, he, he recorded me within for us. Um, it took a long time for me to write it though, because um it basically started like we started writing it well actually i better run was actually written a, like a long time ago and we actually recorded it before everything else and it was supposed to be a single that was supposed to come out in may 2020 which we were before we were supposed to go do like an eastern canadian tour um so we recorded at the same time as our song amends but when uh COVID happened everything started shutting down we said you know honestly like a band our size and at the time we were even smaller so it it didn't make sense for us to release a song because we're like, honestly, no one's going to hear it. Like to release a song, to not go play shows just doesn't make sense. So we decided to, um, we decided to just hold it. And then Scott kind of put the idea in our mind. He's like, listen, like 
you guys kind of have some good momentum going. I think you guys should try and write a full length record. And, you know, when COVID's, <laughs> we actually, we actually had this conversation, like, you know, when COVID's over in a couple of weeks, we can talk about recording. I was like, yeah, no problem. <laughs> of course, two years later, uh, here we are. But um, anyway, I started writing, started writing songs for full length. And as COVID, you know, we realized it wasn't going to go away. We went and we re-recorded a bunch of like our older songs from like back when we were in high school. And uh, they're all on Spotify still. And we kind of like did like better versions of them. But as we were recording that, I was continuing to write for this full length. And then, you know, I was, we were still kind of hoping at that point by the fall, COVID would kind of stop. And uh, it just didn't. So at that point, we had like a very serious conversation with ourselves. Well, what do we do? You know, financially, you know, at the time there was no label or anything, right? So like, oh, we, we were kind of put in a very like tough place there. It's like, well, financially to record a full length record right now, we just don't have that kind of money. It's gonna, you know, between like the actual recording costs, which I'm sure I don't need to tell you is like thousands of dollars on top of then the PR campaign, the music videos, art, vinyl, et cetera. It's like, that's a lot of money. So we kind of said, you know, what if we like made a really, really strong EP? And we basically took, we, we basically like sat down with all the songs I'd written for the four. I think there was like 15 or 20. And we said, what are the best five songs? And then we said, well, we still have this one song here that we have not released yet. We've done nothing with it. So let's, 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 let's put it up. And we're like, yeah, like, let's definitely do that. And um, so we did that. And um, yeah, we just picked like the other four best songs I had written out of like the 20, 25, however many, there were a lot of songs. I don't even remember the exact number at this point, which were all supposed to be for the album. And that's why I really like the EP is because we like any song that wasn't like in our minds, at least as conceited as this sounds, if it wasn't like perfect for us, it just got cut because there was, there was so few songs we could do. Right. And um yeah, that, that was really it. And uh, we recorded the songs. We worked really hard on them in the studio. Like pre-production for that took forever because we like really, we just had the time, right? Like, especially with shutdowns, like all of us were working less. We said, yeah, let's just like, let's just, let's just do it, man. And uh, we're so very grateful to Scott who really helped us out, like as well as the studio he was at, um, which is Schoolhouse Studios, which is owned by a guy named Nick, uh, Nick Ginn. He really, they both really helped us out like financially with everything to make sure like we could do what we needed. Um, something we'll always be grateful for. And yeah, really proud of the outcome. I'll mention the two guest vocal features were really cool too. That's sick. So you're from Toronto, Canada. How's the yeah. alternative music scene there? Do you have a favorite local band, a favorite venue? Um, yeah, no, uh, we definitely have one of the, uh, I think we have one of the coolest like scenes here we have like we have like a very like nice thriving like punk scene which is like kind of where we're in and uh there's also a really cool like indie rock scene here too um as far as my favorite venue goes hmm that's tricky we have a lot of really nice ones i know our i think so the the, the show i was talking about before that was sold out was at a venue called the velvet underground I think that's probably my favorite venue we've ever played. It was like really nice and the sound was incredible. Um, it's a really nice memory for me for us too, you know, getting to play like such a big show like that. Um, my favorite venue in the city though to attend, like as a, as a concert is, uh, we have a venue called the Danforth Music Hall. That's really nice there. It's uh, a little bit bigger than us, but uh, nice place. Very cool. So who are your biggest influences? My biggest, in oh, that's a tough question. It's always a question we get asked a lot, but uh, um, it's weird because when I, when I like write music, I don't really ever think to myself that like, you know, I want to try and sound like this band. I just like kind of, I don't know. The way, the way I kind of do it is like, I'll usually be like trying to figure out how to play a song that I've been listening to like on guitar or whatever and I'll like completely mess it up and then I'll be like oh actually but this sounds kind of cool though so this is technically my idea now so uh that's that's literally how I do it so I I don't know how to like say 
my biggest influence. The bands we've been compared to the most, though, are, um, or I say the band we've been compared to the most is by far fellow uh, Canadian band Millie Talent. It's, uh, I, I definitely do hear it too. A lot of, uh, a lot of like the riffs, especially on Enemy Within. A lot of people said the I Better, uh, the song I Better Run, which is the lead single, was uh, very Billy Talent esque. But uh, I can tell you straight up, that song, Can't Forget, is uh, definitely pretty. <laughs> Especially that main riff, it's very similar to uh, something Billy Talent would have done on their first couple of records. That's awesome. So now I'm going to ask you some non-music questions. It's a good way for me to get to know you. I did this with the oh, other sure. bands I interviewed. Are you ready? Absolutely. See it. Our first one, favorite sports team. Favorite sports team. <laughs> to be honest with you, man, I don't really watch sports. So you had to pick a team. If I had to pick a team, I would have to go with uh, probably the Toronto Maple Leafs. I feel like going from Toronto, it's got to be my pick. I know. Uh, yeah, it, you had our, to lock, like hockey. Follow, follow, follow. Yeah, I know. It's uh, you have to know, right? The hype in the city is just not doesn't end. Our uh, our drummer though, Aton, he's really into basketball and baseball. Baseball more than basketball, actually. But uh, yeah, he's, he's a really big Blue Jays fan. Yeah, they're heading in the right direction, man. They got Vlad Guerrero and Bo Bichette. Yeah, I know. Apparently, yeah, he's, really, he's really excited right now. And they just signed Kikuchi. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to tell him to ask me that. He's going to get a good laugh, actually. Because, <laughs> like, I'm like, like, people know, like, I'm just, like, not a sports guy at all. Not for everybody, man. Yeah, yeah they're the polar opposite of that. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's a lot of people in uh, – I don't know if this is like a music thing in general or if it's more of like a Toronto music thing, but like most people like in bands are also like really big sports fans. Like I, I'm definitely like, I'm definitely like the exception here. You're not the only one. It's all good. <laughs> Fair enough. So what's your favorite book? My favorite book? <laughs> um, I don't know, man. Um, I really liked when I read 1984 in high school. I, I've never been one for like reading, but uh, you know, obviously I graduated high school. I went to university, so uh, I've done my fair share. 1984 was cool though. It uh, really made you think. So I'm gonna say 1984. So if you could go back in time and talk to one world leader or person of influence, who would it be? One world leader or person? Man, you got very unique questions here. Um, like to try to like change something they did yeah and a dead musician counts as a person of influence a dead musician counts as a person of influence i th i mean there's so much tragedy in the world that i could prevent like this um you know, I, I come from, uh, me and uh, our drummer, Eitan, we both come from Jewish families. So obviously, you know, the Holocaust is something that like affects us. So I would probably, I'd probably go back in time and stop that if I could. So yeah, I'd probably stop the Second World War. But, you know, I mean, there's, there's so many different things you could do with that kind of power. So if you had a million dollars, you could donate to any charity. Which oh, one? Geez. Uh, God damn, man. Uh, <laughs> and there's so much you could do with that kind of money. Um, to be honest with you, I don't think I would donate a million dollars to any single charity. I think I would split it amongst a few um, to try to, because a million dollars is a lot of money. Like that's that's enough to make like a serious difference um and i i don't think there's one specific social justice cause that i feel that strongly about that i think is so much more important than others whereas i think there's so many there's so many issues in our world things like you know racism poverty like things that are obviously bad and um i, I don't personally feel that there's any one issue that is so much worse than something else that like there's so many there's so many places to give that kind of money to that for me it's just you gotta split it that's a different answer i like it 
Yeah, I don't know. I, I just that's just so much money. You know what I mean? I, again, like I get with um, to put myself back in that hypothetical situation. I don't think I can just blindly give that kind of money to someone. I would have to do a lot of research on something like that to see like where the money's gonna go, what's gonna do, what uh, what it's gonna do, and all those kinds of things. You know? You don't want it to go to the wrong hands. Yeah, because. That's right. That's a good question. I like that question. All right, last question. What are some places in Toronto that visitors should check out? Places in Toronto visitors should check out. Hmm. I would say the greatest place in Toronto. Hands down, it's the greatest, dive, my favorite dive bar in the entire world. It is a, uh, it is like a Mexican restaurant downstairs. They have the best nachos you'll ever have in your life. And a concert venue upstairs. They host like a weekly emo night. Uh, the place is called Sneaky D's. It's on Bath at Bathurst and College Street. Anyone, in, basically anyone in any Toronto band will know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm sure tons of people have heard of it, who even are in Toronto. But uh, yeah, you definitely got to go there, 100%. You know, like the classic tourist shit, like you know, CN Tower. I don't know, whatever else. I think I've heard of it. Heard of it because I think some of my friends have played there. Yeah, if you're if you're like, like played there. Yeah, I I mean they get like reasonably big size shows like in the pop punk. You know, I know like right before COVID, Knuckle Puck played there, which uh, I was pretty surprised. It's not that big of a place. Um. Yeah, the, when you if you're like in a band touring to Toronto, there's a good chance you'll be playing there because it's it's a good size venue. It's also the way I like the way the venue's set up too because it's it's kind of like narrow but long, so it always feels full even if you don't sell that many tickets. So even if you can put like you know if you're starting out you get like 25, 30 people and they're all in the front, it's gonna feel pretty full to you, which is nice. It creates a better vibe for everyone, I think. Whereas some venues. Although I can think of any on top of my head where they're not like I remember the first venue we ever played was this place called the Rock Pile, which is uh in Etobicoke, which is like a city right outside Toronto. I think it's technically a part of Toronto or whatever. But um the place holds like it only holds like 400 people, but the way it's set up, it's set up so like it's like very like short like that, but like very wide across the stage. So unless you like manage to completely sell it out, it always feels so empty. And I don't know. I hate that. Like, I like when the venue feels full, you know? I don't know. I kind of, that completely, like, sidetracks your question, but... Oh, no, you're good, man. Like, I definitely feel you on that. Yeah. Definitely, uh, if you're coming to Toronto, you definitely don't want to go there. I'll keep that in mind. You'll have to take me, take me to all those places. 100%, my man. 100%. Well, I really appreciate you, man, coming on and uh, chatting up a little bit. The support means the world to me. No, oh, thank you, man. I really appreciate you having me. It's uh, I really appreciate appreciate your support of us, and uh, that's the way we gotta do things, right? We gotta support each other. Absolutely. So, for the people that are gonna watch us later, where can they find your music at? You're gonna want to go to our website, NapoleonToronto.com. If you want to watch our music videos, we uh, press the music tab at the top, and we got all the music videos there, all of which were directed by our good friend Michael Cresty definitely check out his other work and if you're in toronto or anywhere in ontario really and need a music video done hit him up he's your guy um obviously we're on apple music spotify you'll find the links to all that on our website i believe it's in the top right corner and yeah instagram dot uh, on instagram at napoleon toronto facebook napoleon toronto twitter napoleon toronto with a zero at the end someone took napoleon toronto before we could get it very sad day for us yeah. Awesome. Yeah, well, man. Great chat with you, brother, and uh, we'll, uh, I'll see you soon. I hope so, man. I really appreciate having me. Of course, anytime. See you later. See you, man.